Welcome to Lead Story. So the issue in hand is one that requires you to be patient as we wade through the issues. In 2019, the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council was formed, coming out of the old Jamaica Diaspora Advisory Council. So 2019, the GJDC became active, carrying on work that had been taken, taking place for decades before. They have been putting on the Biennial Diaspora Conference for a long time now. This is the 10th such conference, 10th over 20 years, biennial every other year. And so they are set to convene in Montego Bay, St. James for the 10th annual edition this year. But among the diaspora, within the diaspora, there is a group of persons who believe that the government is not listening to them, not giving some suggestions that they've made about tackling some of the problems that are ailing Jamaica, not giving those, those, those suggestions enough audience, or not giving due respect to some of the suggestions that they've put on the table. So they've gone ahead and they've registered the name Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, GJDC, and they've scheduled a conference for the Mobe Convention Center from June 16, and they've said that they are the real owners of the name GJDC, causing confusion in the diaspora as to which conference to attend, which conference and which set of organizers are being backed by the government of Jamaica and has been endorsed by the Wholeness Administration. And so to wade through all of that, I've invited Dr. Rupert Francis. He's the chairman of the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Intervention Prevention Task Force. And Peter Gracie, he's chairman of the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council for Southern U.S., the forerunning GJDC, if I may be clear. And later on, we'll speak to the man chairing the preparatory committee for the 10th biennial conference set for the Mobe Convention Center, June 16 to 19. All right. Uh, first thing to say is good evening. Welcome, gentlemen. Good evening, uh, Mr. Davis. Welcome. I mean, thank you for um, having us on. That's fine. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let me start with Peter Gracie. Peter, as far as you're concerned, June 16 to 19 in Montego Bay, St. James, at the Convention Center. What is happening there and who is responsible for that? Well, that is the Global Jamaica Diaspora. Um, first of all, that is, the, sorry, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade um, hosting the 10th Biennial, Biennial um, Jamaica Diaspora Conference. Uh, and the ministry is responsible for that. So the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has given its, its, its imprimatur to the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, GJDC, and that's the event mm -hmm. that you are working on for June 16 to 19 in Montego Bay. Correct. Have you encountered any difficulties or have you had to explain anything to any diasporan in light of the move by another group of diasporans to register the name of the entity that you say you represent and which says that it too is having a conference in Montego Bay at the same time? Well, I've gotten questions about it, but I've um, referred those questions to, um, to the ministry. And so the ministry has put out a, a, a press release and uh, that's what the, the, the word is right now. And that's what we stand, the ministry st stands by. And that's what um, I recognize. Is there any equivocation on your part about which organization deserves to bear the title Global Jamaica Diaspora Council? Is it yours or is it another? Well, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm not, I don't want to say mine, but it's the one that I represent. Wait, so, but, but that's um, what I mean by yours, the one that. that you represent, the one that you were elected uh, the USA Southern Chairman of, the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. You're saying that's the one and only Global Jamaica Diaspora Council that you recognize. That I recognize. That's the one, that's the position I ran for a year and a half ago. That's what I know. Very I well. I don't know any other Global Jamaica Diaspora Council anywhere else. Dr. Rupert Francis is, for those who don't know, he's a former army man, attained the rank of captain in the Jamaica Defense Force before going on to the United States to do greater and better things. Dr. Francis, we understand that you and your associates have made the move to register a Global Jamaica Diaspora Council in the U.S. state of Florida. Why did you make that move? Well, first of all, um, I would like to bring some cl clarity to the situation. Isn't it ironic that the Jamaican government is holding a diaspora conference for the diaspora, running it and setting it up for the diaspora with no very little diaspora input? That's the first thing. That's the problem. 
And so when we saw that, and we've been seeing that, and we've been talking to them about it, uh, well, sending messages and all that, if you remember the infamous email we sent according to some people, and we have been talking about the issues that we are supposed to, so we have been following it. And it is a movement. They have said the global diaspora yeah. is a movement. Hold on, not... Dr. Hold on, Dr. Francis. Let, 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 let's, in, in the name of clarity, you were the one who signposted clarity. I'm happy you did that. For clarity, yeah. Yeah. the original question, why did you move to register the name for an entity that predates... Your, well, that, that, that has existed for decades. The Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, you registered it in Florida. Why? It is not an entity. It is a movement, according to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And Foreign but Affairs. why did you register the movement? Because, register the movement because we want to make it an entity. We wanted to make it into a real entity that represents the diaspora. We want to be autonomous. And that's why we did it. When you say you want to make it into a real entity, what do you mean? Because I do not believe that the current global diaspora, despite the fact that I know a lot of people and I, pre and I have a lot of respect for them, they do not represent the diaspora. Stick up in. You, you've said also that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is organizing a diaspora conference and, and that that conference is not being led by diasporans. But that's not true. The Global Jamaica Diaspora Council has 30 members, most of which, or many of which, are involved in the planning and execution of the event set for Montego Bay. So how do you Mr. say... Davis, Mr. Davis, yes. let me make it quite clear. Yes. That they, they do not... Um, they do not have the autonomy on the, the diaspora at all. Stick up in. We're going to take a break, Dr. Francis, and come back, pick it back, right sure. back up. You say autonomy, and then you say that they weren't there at all. We need to get clarity on that after this. This is Lead Story, talking about diaspora matters and just what is said for Mobe, June 16 to 19, 2024, in the name of the Jamaican diaspora. Gordon, host of Holy Road. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your boy John Mark Wigan, host on the show Holy Road. Listen, people need to know what's happening in the church and in ministry in all of Jamaica. It's an absolute blessing. We're really excited to share this. Tune in to see it happen. puts this one on ice. My day has come, the race has begun. I've traveled the seas, I've traveled the waters. Once I was weak, now I'm much stronger. I've worked in the sun, look what I've become. I've conquered the beast, now I'm much greater. I've learned from a failure. Dedication, discipline, and drive. Seizing every moment that comes up in this life. No more fear of missing out. CVM TV News is on YouTube. Get up to date news, sports, and business content at CVM TV News anytime, anywhere. Subscribe now to CVM TV News to see it happen. Welcome back to Lead Story. We're talking about matters concerning the diaspora. We have Dr. Rupert Francis on uh, Zoom. Also, we have Peter Gracie. Uh, Peter is uh, the USA Southern representative on the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, a name that Dr. Francis says he has registered to move the diaspora council from a mere movement into a real entity doing work on behalf of diasporans. Dr. Francis, I come back to you this way. If it is that the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council that Peter Gracie and 29 others represent. If that diaspora council is more far-reaching in its representation than any diaspora board in Jamaica, for, for Jamaicans before, it has members in Africa, North America, Europe, and Asia, and it even has people representing individual sector areas, sport, um, faith, 
uh, creative arts, uh, agriculture, finance, all of that thing, all of those things. How is it that you are willing to say bravely that it is not representative enough of the Jamaicans living in the diaspora? I can explain. I can explain. Yes, I can explain. Yes, there are yes. 30 of them, 15 of which were supposed to be um, elected by the majority of the persons in the diaspora. The votes that came in for those 15 persons are just over 3,000 and 3,000. The rest were appointed by the government of Jamaica, the other 15. So how is that a diaspora council with 15 being, um, being nominated by them, chosen, and they have the ability to get rid of them? We don't. But they no, have the ability to get rid of whoever they show please. But Dr. So Francis, the th there are... There so are therefore, there are, there are 21 there are 21 legislators in Jamaica who serve yes. the upper house of parliament who were appointed there, there are no less there, there are no less legitimate than those voted into the house of representatives right. where the passage of legislation yes. is concerned we are talking about Jamaicans in Jamaica who are legislatively been appointed yes. we are talking about we are the diaspora sir hold on a minute yes. we are diaspora not them and we are saying we, the, 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 the people who have been elected yes they are members of the diaspora yes. but the majority it is Jamaica who is running who is running the show how is that possible a diaspora entity Peter and, Gracie P Peter hold on, let me make it quite clear yes. the fact that they are in fact be doing what they're doing if they are they they, they are breaching the, what they should be doing because they are going against laws foreign the foreign laws oh really yeah. no peter gracie yeah. do you do you do you feel any do, well is there a mark against your legitimacy as a duly elected member of the global jamaica diaspora council i don't i don't think i don't think that there's any form of um First of all, let me say this. Dr. Francis was a part of this before, so I'm not sure where he's coming from yes. as far as it, it's, it, it's not legitimate. He was one of the persons who actually came in and helped to create some of the, um, the, the national diaspora policy and things like that. So I'm not sure where he's saying that it's not legitimate when he was one of them who actually spearheaded this thing. And Peter, weren't you, didn't you not receive 737 votes to win your seat on the council? Yes, I did. And, and, yes. and, 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 and was there a magic mark, a threshold that you should have met, but you didn't meet it and you got the job nonetheless? Weren't those, wasn't the race for this UK, U.S. Southern seat the man or woman who got the most votes and you got the most votes overwhelmingly? Isn't that correct? Yes. There you go. So, so, so Dr. Francis, hold on, Dr. Francis. Hold on, Dr. Francis. Dr. Francis, Dr. Francis, hold on. I'm, giving, I'm going to give you the room. When you were a member of the Jamaica Diaspora, Diaspora Council, were you yes. voted in or appointed? I was voted in. And how many people, how many votes did you get? Um, at the time, I think um, maybe two or three hundred, I don't remember. There you go. So, so, so was, there, was there any mark against your legitimacy because you got only two or three hundred votes? No, I, there was none. But at the same time, we, let me make it quite clear. That's a different time. This is a new time. We are talking about a council who is supposed to be representative of the diaspora, not chosen by the government of Jamaica. But Dr. How Francis, that's the case. But Dr. Francis, how can, wait, how can a country, yeah. it's the only country in the world actually, the only country in the world that does that. I, I'm, I'm not sure I, of that. Dr. Dr. Francis, when you served the Jamaica diaspora board, diaspora board yes. weren't it, wasn't it an eight member council? To my knowledge, no, but for about 14. Oh, well, to my knowledge, it was eight, but even so, let's go with your knowledge 14. Yes. 14 people represented then, 30 represent now, plus a youth council. How is that by, 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 by raw numbers less representative than when you served? What, what are you talking? Listen to me. We are talking about effectiveness and effectiveness. Yes. Somebody gets 70, it's less than 100 votes in one, 17 votes in the UK, and all that something, and you're talking, you're representative. Many people do not know the names of the people who are representing them. They do not, and you're spreading them all over the yeah. world to represent who? One or two or three? Come on, give me a break, man. Doc, Dr. Francis, I'm going to show the viewers the yes. flyer published by the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, yes. the one that, the, yes. the, the group that Peter Grace represents, and I'm going to show them the flyer that came from your group. So let's go, let, yes. let, let's look at the, the, the two. So this is what the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, this is what they published, yes? yes. And yes. this, look at the logo. Let's look at yeah. the one that you published now, that your group has published subsequent yeah. to that publication. Yes. Yes? yes. 
it's almost yeah. the same thing, almost a carbon copy of the original one. Isn't this an attempt to sow confusion, Dr. Rupert Francis? I would not think it is so in confusion. I think it is making clear. And what, let me make it quite clear. You said earlier in your introduction yes. that you were trying to, um, we were trying to, what do you call it? Uh, clear the fog. What's that? Clear the fog. Yes, clear the fog. We are yes. trying to clear the fog. And yes. the fog is this, that we, we are saying to you, it, we would prefer you could um, come to our conference in the evening, which is when it's the evening. But some people who are trying to uh, manipulate this situation are saying that we wanted to, to, to be superimposed on the, the conference in the day. It is not so. Absolutely not so. And so somebody is paying an Nancy around there, and it's not us. Are so you we, going? Are you going to attend upon the conference that is yeah. set for June 16 to 19? Are you going to attend? No, I'm not going to attend the conference. But you're now. going to review it. You're going to review it, though. I'm going to review it. How are you going to review it if you haven't attended? What will you review? They're going to have people there attending. And, and, so, 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 so you'll have people attending who will brief you, and then you review based on that brief? Well, well, well what we're seeing and we are, what we're hearing, of course, yes. I hear you. Peter Gracie, the final word comes to you about the time. Me, what do you have to say to Pete? Say to Pete? Yeah. For a minute. Yes. Let me jump in from here because I'm not understanding what um, Dr. Francis is saying because the the our we're using the, he's using the same logo he's using the same um, image and yes. the thing is and it's close to the time and it looks similar and um, typically uh, to me it's a tactic to divide attention and confuse yes. the attendees steal the thunder because this type of action to me can undermine the original event events legitimacy and it can dilute its impact and it can cause confusion. And so, um, and also potential leading to divided loyalties and attendance. So um, this, what is going on here to me, is sh shows that there could be a lot of disastrous outcomes. Do you endorse any, in any form at all what Dr. Francis's group is doing, Peter Grace? A straight question. Well, the thing is, Everyone has a right to do something in the diaspora. Anyone, no one owns a diaspora. Any group can come and do something. But the thing is, the confusion is when you're using the same logo and you're putting on a conference and the, 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 the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade uh, had, had started to plan this conference and say, this is the conference, this is the date, this is our, and shows the logo, shows everything, and then you show up with a logo or something of the sort, it causes confusion. And the thing about it is, and the thing about it is, um, we, we we are not pooling resources towards a common goal, such yes. as crack what the, what um, Dr. Francis is 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 pushing our let, national unity. Let, let, they, let, they, they, it's like it's fragmented. Yeah, we're, we're out of time, them. Peter. We're out of time, Peter. Let me ask that, uh, let, let me give let, let me give Dr. Francis the last word. Dr. Francis, hold on. Thank you. Do you think? Do you think, Dr. Francis, that you have damaged your standing, your good reputation, by your attempts to confuse? I, there were no attempts by me to confuse, but there were people who are trying to confuse and to sully my character. That's what should be taught. He had a prepared statement. He was allowed to speak about it, and that is not right, Brother Davis. I am telling you that. So I am saying to you, be careful what we're doing, because we're working for the same th uh, thing, but we want in different ways. And we're entitled to do it, as Peter Gracie had said earlier. So that's what I'm saying to you. The uh, diaspora is important to Jamaica, and we are uh, been, been for years. Hear, hear you on that. Here on that, Dr. But, Franz. Yes, you're he, entitled to, as I said, but I didn't say you're entitled to do the yes. logo or the same. Gentlemen, we have, break. we have to take the break. We have to take the break. We have to let's take the break and come right back and we can have finishing statements from both mm. of these gentlemen talking about issues in the diaspora with two men who say they're working for the same goal, but they're on different sides of the same coin. Back with more after these on Lead Story.
Jamaica's favorite drama, Your Guilty Pleasure. All that having a baby now is going to do for you is make you a prisoner of this apartment. Long run shot, Royal Palm Estate is on CVM every Tuesday and Sunday at 9 p.m. Brought to you by MIB Insure. Switch to MIBinsure.com today and save serious money. Hi, I'm Wayne. And I'm Tammy. And, and we, we are, are the Mitchells. You can watch Meet the Mitchells right here on CBN TV every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Yes, you guys don't want to miss it. We will be having new episodes every week. So definitely follow along with our family. Meet the Mitchell family. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> You're the sugar to my tea. Meet the Mitchell family. Back with lead story, just enough time for me to give both gentlemen 30 seconds each to say something final. Uh, Dr. Rupert Francis, uh, you, you are trying to achieve what by virtue of this event that you're having to coincide with the 10th Biennial Conference? 30 seconds, go. I establish parity for the people of Jamaica at home and abroad. That we can work together as one for the, the brand Jamaica. Not to destroy it, but to work together to do it. And we have been trying to do it, and we have not been given the opportunity to do it. And I would like to know why. And we wrote to them, and nobody responded. I am saying to you, we are going to continue to work towards the betterment of our country through and our diaspora. And we're going to bring our diaspora once and for all together, autonomously, as we should have been. And Jamaica should not, as a government, should not be running the diaspora. We say so now, and we'll say that forever. Peter Gracie, are you confident with the role, about the role rather, that the Jamaica government has allowed you and your fellow diasporans to play with this conference and diaspora-related matters? Go. I am very confident because I'm sure when Dr. Francis was in that role, he was also very confident. And the thing is, an, um, when you have an organization pushing to engage the government, because their thing is this crime thing that they're pushing, and I understand. And when you have the, um, this organization uh, that they're pushing to engage the government to reduce crime while simultaneously um, causing a division within the diaspora. diaspora. Inadvertently, it, it contributes to a cycle that fuels crime and it weakens the collective ability to address the root cause effectively. So I'm not sure where Dr. Francis is saying that it's, illegit it's, it's not legitimate while he was a part of that and he helped to create it. Create it. We are here in the diaspora. I'm here to engage. Here you are I that. don't know what's going on. They're doing their own thing, so therefore they're not coming to us for usage. What they're doing, they're doing their own thing. Hear you on that. Thank you very much, Dr. Francis. Thank you very much, Peter Gracie. Peter Gracie is the head of the USA South for the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. And Dr. Francis is the head of the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Inter Intervention Prevention Task Force. And he's also the man who has registered the name GJDC, Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, in the U.S. state of Florida. And he says that's not the only state in the United States that they are going to make that registration. And he's even going as far as registering it with the IRS. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. So, I well, well, I'm being joined, I should be joined in short order by the man leading the preparatory committee for the 10th Biennial Jamaica Diaspora Conference. He's Courtney Campbell. He's the president and the CEO of the VM Group. And uh, one suspects that he has his work cut out trying to get things back on track where the communication is concerned and uh, trying to convince members of the diaspora where they should turn their attention from June 16 to 19 at the Mobe Convention Center. Uh, Courtney, are you okay. there? Listen. Courtney, are you there? Yes, I can yes, see you. Yes, yes, George. Good, good, good. All right, so amid all of the sideline noise, Courtney, from rival groups and people jostling for position, how do you now go forward with the preparations, ensuring that your target audience knows exactly what is happening and who is behind what is happening? Well, George, first of all, thanks for having me. You know, you, you asked a good question. Our answer to that is that we're going to keep sharing information about the conference, about the objectives of the conference, about the program of the conference, about the opportunities for people to benefit from participating in the conference. And so far, we have found that the reception, that information has been excellent. We had a recent global launch of the conference on the 4th of 
of April, it was hosted at the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. We had record turnout for that. Over 3,000 uh, persons were online from across the world. We had people from Asia, from Africa, from continental Europe, and from the traditional diaspora markets. The energy for this diaspora conference is very high. It's the first in-person conference since 2019, and we're getting significant interest for it. So, you know, after that global launch, we are now proceeding with individual follow-up launches in the respective diaspora market. Today, Minister of State Alana Perlong led in the launch in the that was held in the UK. He's there in the UK. I participated in that, and, and members of the ministry team participated in that. We'll have another one uh, this week in, in Brussels, and, and we have, we'll have follow-up presentations in the other traditional diaspora markets. But, but you know, I think I'm pleased with the, with the response so far. Uh, we expect to have over 1,000 uh, people from the diaspora attending the conference. Yes. The, it's important to know, George, that the, the program it has been designed with strong input from the diaspora. I was going to ask so, you that. You know, I was going to ask you that because I was wondering if the conference was just catering uh, to people who have been favorable to what the government has been doing where diaspora engagement has been so concerned, or if the conference is designed to hear out those who.